Hi you guys, this is Christina coming to you guys with another tutorial from Canva. I just wanted to show you just how to add a little transition and background to your obituaries or posters. That way you don't have floating people. <laughs> just so you don't have the little floating people. Um, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to finish off this obituary announcement. So I simply just typed in music. I literally chose the first music element I seen. Um, all I'm going to do is change the transparency of it and move it to the background. That way it's just like another added element. You don't have to always choose doves and staircases and clouds. You can do things that's a little bit more personable. So Mr. Frankie Beverly did pass away yesterday. Rest in peace. And I've noticed that a lot of people were doing Frankie Beverly announcements and rest in peace. So I just decided I would just go ahead and use uh, what I was currently working on. If you have a obituary business things like this definitely gives you time to practice and you can also post this to your social media as well and it should definitely get you some uh engagement so i did just pick just a random music sheet and all i'm literally going to do is just move it to the back and then lower the transparency um i wanted just enough to show color but not too much so that he will still shine in the obituary is just to kind of show you how you can choose any background to make your obituary so i'm gonna show you i'm just gonna add another musical background i'm gonna do a concert background simply because he was an artist and so i'm gonna simply literally i'm gonna move it resize it down the page and because of the way his body is positioned and I already have my elements, I don't have to transition this. I'm simply just going to move it down to where his body creates the transition. So you can't really see where it ends, but it still flows because of his body. And so I do have a fade on this. So I'm going to take the fade off so that his picture is more vibrant and stands out against the background. So one way you can create a fade, you can simply, I'm typing in fade under element, and I'm just going to choose one of the fades that they already pre-have, and they are already different colors. So if you want a particular color, you can just type in blue fade, red fade, yellow fade. So I'm going to start with actually this dotted fade that they have going on because it doesn't have to be just a solid color it doesn't have to be a block you can choose a different element to just jazz it up and make yours a little bit different so literally all i did was resize the dotted fade onto the picture i'm going to move it to the background behind the wordings but in front of him so after i do that i'm going to actually add a just a basic white block well square excuse me i'm going to add a basic white square from the shapes i'm going to resize it right there where i duplicated the second dotted fade and then i'm going to move it of course to the back behind his name i'm going to line it up right with that line that i created with the double fade and to do that i literally just duplicated it and spun it around or you can hit flip that works as well too so i'm going to move it forward above the other fade but but behind the lettering the fonts well the text and so i'm going to show you how to fade with just a simple shape you don't have to actually go and get the fade say they don't have the color that you're looking for for your obituary so here you can customize it i'm going to go down to gradient i'm going to click a gradient and i'm going to have to re-click it because i've already did it so it takes a second for it to reprocess without automatically giving it to me so i'm simply going to choose one of the different styles uh, for direction for the gradient and then i'm going to pick the color um, I like to sometimes do a, a light gray versus all the way white. It just sometimes, I don't know, it just adds a little depth to me and it's not, I don't know, so flat and everything's just not like stark white. So it'll be a little off white uh, to match the dots. 
And so now after I created that and I'm working on changing the transparency on the block once I can get to it. So I'm simply just going to my layers. Sometimes when you have a lot of um, elements, you just have to go to your layers, click the uh, element that you're trying to get and move it to where you can actually access it. So I'm lining it up with that line that I created between the two fades, the dotted fades. And now I am going to adjust it, adjust it so that I can now change, lower the transparency so that it'll run into the dotted fades. And so what I did with the dotted fades, I duplicated it three times. You can do four, some depend on the element. You might not have to do it that many. It just depends on how smooth the transition looks. So for this one, I want to say, I think I did it about three, four times. And then I simply lined it back up with the spot that I had created with the two double dotted. So now I'm just going to go, I typed in white fade, like I was telling you earlier, you can just simply type in a white fade and I'm going to choose this fade and I'm going to put it back at that fade line that I keep creating. That way it helps me know exactly where the transition is so that it'll be a smoother flow. Because if you put it too far to the top, you'll be able to see a little bit on the bottom where you created the fade. And so with certain fades, just the layering will help to make it look smoother, if that makes any sense. So literally that's all I did was I did the block, then I did the dotted lines, and then I simply used a basic fade element to join the two together. And now it looks like one smooth, cohesive look. So I really, really, really hope this helps uh, when you're trying to create different fades or different blocks so that your person is not floating is what I call it. The floating people where you see someone or put someone's picture and they're just kind of in the middle of the page. So yeah, I hope this helps. I just tried to do just, you know, something simple that y'all will be able to use when y'all are doing y'all, I don't want, I want to say your tutorial. I didn't mean to say tutorial. It's something that you can do when y'all are submitting your little mini challenges. This should help. Um, I will do the tutorial for the actual announcement next. So stay tuned for that. And I hope this helps. And thank you guys for tuning in.